Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today is the first day officially when this video airs of 2024. 2024 is here. It is here. Blows my mind. But we thought it would be fun to take a look back on 2023 and some of the major projects that we have done here at uh, both at the house and at within the nursery. So Creekside Nursery as an encompassed whole and just look back of what ha we have done in 2023. Yeah, just kind of looking at everything that we've taken care of, just like what Jenny said with gardening with Creekside at the home and the gardens and everything that you have done. And then our big push with Creekside Nursery, you know, and production. Yeah, yeah. So Tons it's going to be stuff. really, really fun. And that is just the beautiful thing about social media and us doing five videos a week is that we have our life a lot like in video and we so do. we can like look back and in time we, we look at things and we're like oh yeah i remember this or i remember that or you know whatever so that's just the neat thing about social media and all these videos is that we can go back and look at exactly what was happening on certain weeks of the year and these projects have been documented from basically the beginning to the end or where they are now. Yeah, so we're gonna go around and hit a couple of projects and kind of talk about them and mm -hmm. talk about them. And when, what's fun about this for you is all the cool footage, yeah. you know, being able to kind of put it all together in one um, video. Right, so for example, the berm. So yeah. here we are at the privacy berm that separates the house and the nursery. We began the construction, like we presented the idea of this space to you in October of 2022 um so that the whole idea became to fruition or began in the fall of 2022 but it was in within 2023 that we really saw the plants and in it that first year of growth and yeah, like really with fun. anything in 2023 lots of infrastructure you know it's crazy to say but lots of infrastructure mm -hmm. into a planting berm area we had the whole thing of the berm and bringing in where we brought in all of this nice screen mm -hmm. filled dirt and just truckloads after truckload after truckload yeah um started to fill up this space you know prior to you know right and then we planted we began we got the infrastructure in as far as we already had like the main irrigation lines in we, of course we had to build, to build it we had to put the fence yeah, in yeah. and then in it was november december of 2022 that we put the trees in so we right. put the trees in and then the vast majority of the shrubs and then we just walked away and left it yeah, the and winter. it was crazy. You kind of cut off. You think, oh, okay, we did irrigation, we did the fence, you know. But when we did the irrigation, I mean, we had to come almost 400 feet mm -hmm. to bring, you know, the water up here. And then when we got up here, we break off in two zones at, at the berm. Mm -hmm. And then we say, well, we got to go over. So we go over the driveway and go into two more zones over here into the the woodland garden mm -hmm. it's a shade garden around our entrance so you know just that project like with anything it opens up the door to other things that were going on at the same time right right you absolutely know? yeah yeah so we got everybody the trees and the shrubs in and the end of 2022 and then I, we planted some daffodils in here we had a beautiful spring and then it was later on in the spring i would say late spring because it was quite warm and our friends at walters gardens sent a massive load of beautiful perennials from proven winners and so we got those installed planted those and so on this side of the privacy berm the nursery side the public side we only have perennials trees and shrubs there's no annuals on this side and it was an absolutely beautiful spring summer fall and then their structure is still there now everyone loves to you know take a look at the, this side of the berm when they come and visit yep. at their garden center and then on the other side we did oh gracious because yeah. jerry is a huge fan of annual color and we did the mass planting of the super tunias. yeah we did jasberry you know, Super Tunia Vista Jazzberry, and then Super Tunia Mini Vista Yellow, which was new 
in 2023. Yep. And then we also did some snow drift, this to snow drift yes, and many this to out. white. Yes. We outlined it. So it was, it was a beautiful. Some of the very, very popular super tunes yeah. were in that section. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then it, yeah. So Jerry is, and also stay tuned because Jerry, at the end of this video, we forgot to mention that he's going to throw up the drone and show all of these projects, what they look like Today. here yeah, yeah, look, in real time. In winter. In winter to give you a perspective because we are blessed in the Piedmont of North Carolina and you'll see the stark difference between the summer drone footage <laughs> and the winter drone footage because we are very, very green here with all of our beautiful hardwood trees, but we're also blessed with pine trees. So that does give us does green. Evergreen. Evergreen. Yeah. Uh, but there is a big difference between looking at the footage of the summer and Yeah, and it kind of will give that drone footage will give you a you know, a quick view of everything the way it is at the end of 2023 and, you know, just kind of looking forward to what's coming in 2024. Right, right. Yeah. So as far as what is looking forward in the in the berm for 2024, on the nursery side, because it is so many perennials, trees, and shrubs, we're just going to shore up any perennials that don't make it through the winter or that they're struggling or they just haven't done well. Um, so we will replace anything that needs to be replaced. And then on the house side, we're going to do a, a lot of fun plantings. Um, we're going to rearrange the boxwoods a bit. Mm -hmm. They're currently, those, those flower beds are filled with thousands of tulips. So nothing is happening right now. But between when we take the tulips out and we put the summer annuals in, yes. we're going to restructure the sprinter boxwoods. We are. Yeah, we're going to make it a little more simpler, um, simple. You cohesive know, cohesive look there with the boxwoods and the perennials and shrubs that are planted to the left and to the right of that little zone mm -hmm. where we used it in 2023 for you know jazzberry mini vista yellow yellow white and snow, snow drift. Drift. Yeah. so this year we're going to do uh i'm not going to tell you exactly yet what we're going to do but we're going to do a completely different <laughs> mixed planting with annuals we are so yeah so that will be lots of fun now the other big project that began around the time of this one and then went into 2023 was up at production with building what we call the annex and so we're going to take a little jaunt up to production and yep. go check out the annex yeah let's do it all right we're gonna do it here we are up at production it's standing in front of the building that we call the annex and the annex merely is a one room structure that spans the length of essentially three greenhouses. The first greenhouse is not, we don't use it as a greenhouse. It was a repurposed greenhouse from retail. It's dry storage, but it has the same structure and look as the other two production houses. So it connects all three of these and we, you know, you saw us build it. We began construction in late 2022. Yeah, it was fall, late summer. I mean, I think there's some things, the grading may have started. We may have started putting posts in and building the frame out, that mm -hmm. kind of thing in that time. Uh, moved fairly quickly through that stage of putting in the post, building out the frames, reordered trusses, brought trusses in. Yeah, pre-made trusses. Pre-made trusses great. to be able to span, because the building itself is 22 feet wide. So you have to, you know, have an engineered truss made for that mm -hmm. to, to be able to span that. And then, you know, we got, got to all that, got the roof put on, um, nice. We went with the hardy plank siding, so it'll last forever. That's like a cement board type. Right. And it's paintable, so you can paint it whatever color you want to, but it's not like wood where you, it must have a fresh coat of paint yeah. on it to keep it from rotting. So that's what we have on our house. And it has done great so yeah so it's nice because you can paint it you can keep it whatever color you want it's very attractive we went with a nice light gray to blend in with the hardwood trees the oak trees that are surrounding yeah. us because we don't want it to stand out we didn't want we wanted it to blend in and be a nice uh feature within here and then we went with the metal roof metal roof you don't have to worry about that for a very long time yeah because we do it is we have like i said these nice mature oak trees and in the uh in the fall, yeah. when the acorns fall, man, you got to have something nice and tough and strong as far as the roof. So we did that, and then we went ahead and poured the whole, the whole floor. Whole floor. At the same time, we poured um, production 
one, one. which is the middle greenhouse. Um, and, you know, so we did that, those pours all at the same time. So that got everything in this area of production in concrete. Yeah. Um, which is, is, is really nice and where we're moving. Because we have pallet jacks. We're moving pallets around. I'm moving pallets around the other day for the new boxes that came in for shipping. And so that's, you know, this we built this building as a multi-purpose building, mainly used for the shipping organization the creekside nursery it also houses the potty machine it does. that we got in the early part of 2023 2023 so you were with us as we went Ooh. down to seams alabama which is right near mobile yes that was far south in Alabama as you can go yep. and so we did a road trip of uh of us going down there and we picked it up brought it back it made it back safely and in one piece everything went nice and then that having that potty machine last this year last year 2023 i'm i'm still don't know where i am um i mean it was a game changer for us as far as the production yeah so it, we, it was very easy to set up we got it going really quick um which we needed to yeah and then and, and yeah it, it's changed it's changed everything i i like the fact that it, it is on wheels and we can move it around um, but you know, you can see footage of this thing where we're just planting and the conveyor belts moving those 10 count crew winter trays and we're, gallons we're and three gallons. Yes. Yeah. Cause we, we come to find out when we had that press made that would press a hole in the 10 count tray. And I, even at the time when I ordered this thing, and this is the way this goes sometimes, I was kind of on the fence with that to begin with, mm -hmm. but I just went ahead and did it. It wasn't that much more money in comparison to the machine. So, but we really don't use it because it's just as fast to, when it comes out, you have your plants and you just plug right into. Yeah, they're so little. They're it's so little. easy to do. So we kind of do that with the grandes, you know, the gallons that kind of thing now once we get to a, a three gallon size we may have some footage of that yeah drilling the hole the drilling the hole so that's a little more of a because you're putting in a whole quart into a three gallon saves a lot of time saves a lot of time and it has a different way of running the conveyor where it stops drills spits it out you know and move it on um, we can't wait <laughs> to use that again with our new conveyors yes yes, yes. Oh and it gosh. makes such a difference though with um you know having our people because when we first kind of rolled out the potting machine we got a little bit of a pushback on some just a handful of people saying oh, yeah. that you know you're replacing humans yeah. with machines and that absolutely is the exact opposite of what happened using when we use machinery it makes us more efficient and it um, takes away those jobs that nobody really wants to do it is no fun ask jerry for 10 plus years to physically pick up these massive bags and dump the soil out onto a you know a trailer and do all this stuff so the machinery and the technology takes away those jobs that are extremely physically demanding that wear and tear on your body over a long period of time and makes us more efficient so we were able to do to plant the same amount of annuals in about a day two days that would take us two to three weeks beforehand and, a and lot when, of physical labor. and a lot like it physically saves you so at the end of the day you feel very accomplished and great i mean mm -hmm. yeah you're tired because you've worked a good solid eight hour day but you're not like you don't wake up the next morning and you can't get out of bed and so when you're using the potting machine to really run it at full capacity, you need like eight to 10 people. Um, and so it makes a huge difference on the efficiency, the attitude of everybody. Yeah, everybody's happy. Everybody's happy, you feel great, nobody. Even our kids, our teenage kids were like, oh my gosh, this is fun. Because when you've done it the other way for so many years, using that machine, it really is fun. Yeah, they enjoyed it, um, you know, it's just, with everything, it changes, you know, the way you do things and you learn new things. And we know this year we're going to use it even in more efficient ways. Right. Absolutely. You know? So, but yeah, the Annex is, was a big game changer for us. We still have some add-on stuff to it in 2024 too. We do. So We're looking at yeah. adding some more climate control in yeah, there. we are. Um, it is connected to those three greenhouses because right. each greenhouse has sliding doors, which it holds back 
you know some heat and it doesn't really cause an issue but that's great now it has worked out mm -hmm. really well yeah um so yeah so we're, we're we want everybody there's only really peaks during this is well insulated from the top and the sides there's just that peak in the summer when it's super hot and then right here in where it's cold december where it gets really cold yeah. and you come up here and even though it's still really warm in there compared to outside yes you know yes. But it's still cold so all of you sweet people who have ordered plants or products from gardeningwithcreekside.com every single one of your pieces has come from this building so yeah right uh, out this door right into out the this UPS door truck. ups just pulls right up here and yeah. we load them up and off yeah. they go so we have a great driver so we yeah. do have the best ups driver yes. we adore him um and so Next thing, I mean, while we're here, do you want to go ahead and hit the new greenhouse? Yeah, let's go ahead and, and take a gander at that while we're up here. Let's do it. Here we are standing in front of the new production greenhouse that completely started in 2023. And gosh, we didn't start this one until the summer. Summer. Yeah, I think uh, Jason showed up to grade August. August. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. We're getting better at this, y'all. It, crazy thing it was it was dry super 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 dry in august now it, it is wet after seven and a half inches of rain yes got, but praise the lord we've got we, the concrete got down the, the gravel down the mulch down so we're out it's of here. the mud it's covered yes. we're out of the mud we're, so this is a 90 by 93 90 by 96 sorry 90 by 9 i knew that went right 90 by 96 super arch greenhouse from our friends at atlas greenhouses in georgia we have gotten all of our structures that are on the property are from atlas they are um and uh they they're great to work with because jerry can call heath up and say this is what i'm going to use the structure for because all of our structures really are very different so we have of course the greenhouse at the nursery that's more retail focus but it also grows this is for a bigger production and then the two uh, connected to the annex are very different so we have three different structures from atlas greenhouses but this 90 by 96 the main purpose the main goal is that we can produce more plants uh, both for our retail customers but mostly for the e-commerce side yeah, and it just gives us that space to grow for e-commerce and also for the gardens, I would say, too. That's true. Um, I know that we're going to be producing a lot of plants for the videos and for the gardens. Right, because we grow all of our plants that we plant yeah. here, that we, all of the annuals, we grow ourselves, whether it's for our retail customers, our e-commerce customers, or our, the gardens at the house and at yeah. Creekside Nursery. Right. So we do a lot of growing. So it's a lot of growing, so we need that space. And then you can see um in the in the camera there you should be able to see like this large white curtain that's in the front there's one going down the side and the side this area here um is where we can get the potty machine inside this bay or other equipment really mm -hmm. easily but these curtains will automatically come up and down um according to temperature you know when it needs to cool off right. you know um so but we have two entry doors on this side and that was that was a like kind of like a last minute, you know, change. We added the door far to the left. Um, we'll see. It's just, but it's it's there if we need it and that kind of thing. Well, I think we'll naturally use that because, as I was calling them, the human doors. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so when we go in and or, I mean, we could still drive you know, the machines through there. Yeah, I can drive the, one of the um, side-by-sides through there. I've been doing that mm -hmm. when we've been working inside here lately. But we, you know, we started with the grade. Which was massive. It was a massive, that's probably one of our biggest move, well, it was. It was the biggest movement of dirt we have ever gone through Because here. literally where the greenhouse is sitting was our original shrub lot. So we had, yeah, had all all the shrubs that we were growing, um, and not all of them, we have two shrub lots up here, but that was the original one. Yeah. So we had to physically remove all of the shrubs off of it, get the landscape fabric up, and then that allowed Jason and his crew to come in and do some I mean, there magic. may be, I can't remember, there was I mean, maybe some video of that, but we were actually moving shrubs off the lot as that equipment was arriving and working that yeah, day yeah, i think we do you know and it was all done within a day and then the next day i came up and removed the the old plastic and mm -hmm. got rid of it i know there's video of that because i remember videoing that one 
Um, so then it was ready for, you know, Frank and the boys to start, you know, cutting it in. We had to cut in on this side here because the way the lay of the land is and where the greenhouses sit and they had to go and grab just. But the great thing about it is, is that we were not, we didn't yards. have to bring in any soil. We were able to use all the soil off of our property um, because that was the thing when uh, Jason came. So Jason's the owner. Frank is one of the operators. Um, but working with that, um, Jason was like, okay, these are your options. We can either bring in what was going to be a hundred truck, truck loads, a hundred truck loads of soil. A lot of, that's a, that's a lot, lot of soil. Ton, ton of soil. Or he said, we can regrade and kind of reshape certain areas, which worked out great because I know on the back side of the property, yes. we had had issues with water flow. There's been some construction, some new house construction up from us, which then affected how the water flowed to us. And so in that of pulling the soil for this pad, they were able to now grade it so that that water flows away from us and in a, like it directs it where we want it to go. It doesn't come across all our shrub areas mm -hmm. anymore. And, and it just, cause like if we get it rain, like we just got seven inches of rain, that water tends to run for a little while, you know, <laughs> days, so, you know, but it, it, uh, it, that, that helped tremendously kind of, kind of like a win-win right. um, movement of that. So dirt. then once we got the, the, the lay of the land was correct and we got it graded we did and the then retaining wall. we got the retaining walls in that was in house jerry and andrew worked yeah. on that um and then um then our friends from atlas came up and started the installation we did concrete before that oh concrete yes yeah. that's right concrete so this first. time we poured the concrete prior to because it was easier for the guys to get the trucks in because it's so long so long and that way also it's so many posts so they you know they would pour the concrete in the hole for the guys to set their post mm -hmm. so that the they work together they work together the next day after that we came in and poured the large pad here which would be the 30 by 96 and then we did the sidewalks the following day after mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so now the the whole structure is up everything is put together uh the electrical is just about complete yeah just about we've got that. gas we have yeah you know, so the heaters the heaters are running and working and then just one of the last things would be you already have a lot of the infrastructure for the irrigation in you probably yeah, just have a little have, bit more we have irrigation ready to go the only thing that we're looking at maybe is overhead irrigation and we'll see how that goes for this season but um you know the there's water there and there is power so yep. we have power it's already on we just don't have power to all appliances you know like lights and fans yep so, so what we will begin growing plants in here and this year 2024 2024 yep yeah it'll be about probably sometime around week five or so week seven for sure um where it's going to fill up quick so in the horticultural world uh in the growing world we uh look at times of the year by week so like this week the very first week of january the first week of the year is week one so when he said week five week seven that means the fifth week of the year the seventh week of the year a, um, because yeah. when we're ordering plants they'll say you know when do you want them what week do you want them well i want them week five or i want them week 15 or week 43 right whatever it is yeah. so that's what the weeks mean it's just the timing throughout the year yeah yeah so all right, so now what we're going to do is we've got, oh, let's do the chicken, you want to do the chicken coop or the signature garden? Um, chicken coop will be next. Let's do the chicken coop. So we're going to go see uh, the new chicken coop that made its debut in 2023. Yes. Here we are up at the chicken coop. Oh, chicken coop. Yep. Probably they brought a chicken coop back. Yes, probably can hear them. Uh, they're right here below us. They're yeah, waiting. this is not our first rodeo with chickens. No, they're waiting on their mealworms. They haven't gotten their treat this morning yes. yet. So you'll hear them talking to us. But no, this is not our first rodeo with chickens. We actually got our first set of chickens. It was the first year we homeschooled. Emily was... Emily's in, 19 now. Yeah, so she was. she had just finished third grade. Jackson was pre-k so there you go however many years ago that was yep. she just she's in her freshman year of college now so we've had chickens many times two two rounds of them before mm -hmm. that's what we, as we call the the garden shed that was the old chicken coop yeah they got older 
uh, life got crazy. We got out of chickens for a couple of years, but we, I just missed them because he, he missed the eggs. He didn't miss the chickens per se. Um, <laughs> but there's so, if you have chickens. I like the fact now though, that we have a good number and yes. it's not overwhelming, have nine. you know, and it's, it's, it's I very think manageable. It's manageable. So if very. you want to get in, I would say nine or less. Right. You know, and it gives you a few eggs and you know, it's, it does. it's nice. It is. So the space that we're standing on is above what we call like Hydrangea Hill, the cottage garden, um, the raised, our garden boxes. And this area, you had always wanted to develop oh, yeah. this particular piece of the property because- For a long, long, a long, long, probably, long time. I mean, going back to when we built the house- we 20 were years trying, ago. Yeah, I mean, it's been a progression from the bottom down there all mm -hmm. the way to this spot. I mean, this is a high spot. I'm like, almost, I can look into my second story of my home yeah. from here, you know, right below us sits the garden boxes. That was a big upgrade to this space. It this was. this whole corner is a very, when we say red clay in North Carolina, <laughs> this is it. This, this, this is the absolute epitome of red clay. This is you the look spot. it up on Wikipedia and it is a picture of our yard right here. If it wasn't backed up to the, one of our corner spots of our property, this would have been really probably an excellent spot for a house right but our property line is at yeah. the very back right here so we're we're right on the edge of our property line so you came in here you and jackson came in here and we had a bunch of what we call like scraggly junk trees because years and years and years ago there was a big ice storm and the pine trees that were here were very young and that that ice storm caused them to be bent and they were misshapen and they were not sh nice and straight so we had many pine trees that were leaning at like 45 degree angles so there were a lot of junk trees in here that were small scraggly bent that had been knocked over in storms so we that really have no future so we came in here and y'all cleared them out mm -hmm. and then so you did all this grading yourself we did yeah, yeah we did all this one ourselves um lots of tree removal that kind of thing your dad actually repurposed some of those trees into lumber he built a, a new building for for a shed that's holding equipment to help sawmill type lumber he has right. a sawmill but this one is more specialized in taking corners off and bark off and different things right. i'm not right sure so, but that was good virginia pines are what were here yes and it's a very hard pine it's a, it's good for lumber um, it's not the known for being very straight. So if you catch one that's straight, you, you've got a lot of you, lumber. You do, you do. We built the barn with the siding from Virginia Pines out of this section. Some were cut out of here, and then some were cut out down the way past in front of us. So then starting in, it was probably in May is when we, we've got this chicken coop is from Carolina Coops, and yes. you can check them out. It was actually one of you sweet viewers that turned me on to Carolina Coops and said, hey, you might want to think about, because the plan was is that we were going to build it ourselves. Build it. Yeah, yeah. And so then one of you sweet viewers was like, hey, check these people out. And we were like, oh my gosh. So you can either have Carolina Coops, they will install it for you, or you can buy the kit and then you can assemble your chicken coop yourself. And they have a wide range of designs and, and shapes and structures. You can go from the very basic to the extreme bougie Taj Mahal for your chickens. So there is a <laughs> wide range of different chicken coops and different accessories that go with that. We went with the... Gracious, I cannot remember the name of this one. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen because I don't remember now either. Was it the yeah. Carolina? It might have been. I don't know if it's the Carolina. I don't Carol know. The Carolina had like board and bat and siding. We'll That's a lot down. of what the changes, you know, is this one was very simple. But then you could get board and batten, siding, yeah. and that kind of thing. But we knew from our first chickens what we wanted and what we didn't want. And that's why we love these people so much is because of how they've designed it. It makes perfect sense both for the chickens yes. and the humans. Yeah, that was what turned me on. I was kind of like, oh my gosh, we're going to spend probably, I mean, we really didn't, probably didn't even spend double. I mean, no. by the time you buy all the material and take all your time in the factor, it, you know, this just came engineered, ready to be put together. But I really like, like where we're standing, how these doors can open up and you just clean the coop out from just right here. Yep. You know? Yep. So starting in, it was in May and then early June, 
uh, we were putting the, the kit together. We kind of, we worked together, but Andrew also really. Andrew has put most of it together, except of it for together. when we had to help him put panels up right, and that right kind of stuff. Right, right, the very beginning. Yeah. So he, he kind of took on that project and did a great job with it. And then it was mid-June that we first started planting the annuals in front here of the chicken coop because we um, having the chicken coop up here developing tons of gardens and we're just getting started we still have quite a few plants that need to go in the ground this winter um, and, and even directly in front of us right here we're going to do a woodland garden so i need someone to come in and clear out some uh, scraggly stuff yep. that doesn't belong there and that will happen this winter um, as soon as that production greenhouse gets to the next step then he's coming over here he is mine and it won't take very long to do so we can go ahead and get yeah. these plants in the ground mm -hmm. so they can get established before the heat hits but this has been a big big project it has been fantastic we love the coop we love having our girls we've got nine of them they are faithfully still producing eggs for us and the only other thing that we're going to have to do is we don't have gutters we did not put gutters on the chicken coop but when we got that you know seven inches and whenever we get big downpours water is traveling through one certain section of the run and then it gets wet in there so we're going to put some gutters on definitely the back side i don't think there's any need to put them on the front side because the annuals are right here and they catch it and then of course the hill the lay of the land shoots it away um so that's the next thing we've we've got to do asap yeah because it's working like as far as the trying to fix that lay of the land it it, and it's not and it's not coming it's mm -hmm. not that water's coming we down stopped that. we stop that because it's, it's coming, it's, off, it's the coming off the roof and yeah. then it's hitting and then it just works its way downhill which just happens to go through the chicken run so that's the only thing that we have to do to tweak that and other than that it is doing great the girls are doing great they love their home it is quite predator proof we do not have mm -hmm. had not had any kind of uh break in we do have the solar lights so i can see sometimes at night when <laughs> somebody's walking through here because the lights pop on so i know we have little friends that walk through but the girls are nice and safe and uh just giving us beautiful eggs yep all right so the last big project of the year because as if this was not enough uh was the proven winter signature garden mm -hmm. that we have come a huge long way on that so we're going to head over to the signature garden and let's see what's happened in 2023 all right so last but not least the last big project of 2023 was this proven winners signature garden yeah, that we installed watching if this is the one that you've probably seen a lot of videos on lately yes yeah because we were knocking it out we were knocking it out we knew that we were going to uh install this in the fall so that was it wasn't anything that we were just like we installed it at the appropriate time that we, we planned on doing yeah, it. We had planned on, and we know we started in the summer and the heat. And it was, I remember that it was so hot. I was out here in the air conditioned bobcat, yes. you removing, know, the, display removing gardens. the display gardens, display gardens that we yep. had here, yeah, um, and getting our, everything prepped, you know, after that, right? So, proven winners approached us uh, a year and a half ago, yeah, it's been almost two years, almost two years now. Um, and asked if we would consider creating, designing, installing a Proven Winners Signature Garden here at Creekside Nursery in Dallas, North Carolina. We were honored, we were excited, we immediately said yes, and they have been very gracious and understanding that it takes time. You just don't create a signature garden overnight. And so this space has been, you have to think on it, you have to dream about it, you have to plan it, you have to think of infrastructure, you have to think of logistics. And so we, as you have seen, have gone on this journey of installing this garden that is a signature garden, basically is a, um, a garden that is open to the public for free. So you can come and you can tour these gardens but it is a collaboration of a, um, a grower, a, a public space that people can see, a uh, Proven Winners landscape designer. And so the pro professional, so that is Jerry, and of course we're the grower too, so it kind of works out all in one. But we have a beautiful display of the Proven Winners plants. 
So Proven Winners does not tell us what plants we put in here. They do not tell us mm. how to design it. This design is 100% our own. And we will have a great display of annuals, perennials, shrubs, and Proven Winter trees here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it does not have to be 100% proven winners. It can, it just has to be a well representation, a nice display of the of the plants within these confines of the formal garden. Though they are going to be 100% proven winners, right, and right. then as we incorporate into the outer um, gardens, there will be, of course, some you know a few here and there that are not proven winners. And yeah, so this this space has been really fun, and. Yeah, walk us through a little bit of the you know, installation. Yeah, like I said early on, we started moving out those older display gardens and their plants and started doing some grading. We brought in, once again, some more screened uh, dirt like we used in the berm area over here just to kind of raise up a couple of spots. The garden's high to my right, to your left, and then it's low over here. We know we can get drainage from my right because it's uphill, we're going to have the garden go into that hill. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it has worked. We have had, went through that seven inches of rain. There was no standing water in the garden. No. There was none. It, it went around, went to the drainage. You probably, I don't know if we, we showed you the river rock area. Mm -hmm. We had that, that, that was there. That drainage area has been there for a long time. Um, that has always kind of protected the shrub area, which is in front of us. Um, so we got that done. We moved uh, fiber from the barn all the way to the annex building. So we knew we needed to get that done prior to any kind of planting, or even before that we put in the fill dirt. So right, because the fiber runs straight through. Um, it goes right the, through the garden. Right, go, right go through the garden, and it's like what? three or four feet down yeah it's down there i mean yeah. it's down so but yeah. still you don't cut fiber line so you <laughs> it's got to be that one continuous line and so we knew that that had to be in before we, we did anything put some electrical in that kind of thing we had to go around even though we tried to go around it it's a drainage french drainage pipe we went right through it with the excavator one time we thought we were past it right but that turned out to be kind of a blessing um, was that when I went through it, we we put a catch basin down into the ground. We didn't show you this, but it went down in there and we connected the pipes back and then we filled that thing full of wash stone. So any kind of drainage that makes it to that spot, it goes in there and then out. Yes, yes. So that's, that's helping a lot. So we also had, of course, once we had it basically semi-level, we had the fill dirt in here. Yeah. We came back and we did the, ir the irrigation lines because this bed, this yes. formal space is on irrigation. So we have great above ground irrigation um, shooters. Yep. I know what you call it. Yeah, rotors from Hunter. Yep. We used the uh, uh, PG, P, BGP, I think it is, PGV. One of those, they have all those. That, I also use their valves for each zone. Um, so those are 12 inch, they come up high, and that way it gets over any type of uh, shrub mm -hmm. that would eventually get to size. Um, so we got the the raised, the raised berm, raised yes, bed, the berm yes. was the first one to that go That was in. probably the first, like when I started moving some dirt off property, mm -hmm. yeah, then put the berms in. Yeah, so we got them planted with the sprinter boxwoods, the mm -hmm. little lime punches. Yep. So those are in, then as we roll around here at Creekside, we did a little tweaking as we were installing. And I think it was, I don't know if it was, I guess it was your idea to do the walls, yeah. the walls around the raised beds. And so yeah. it's a three-sided wall, retaining wall. And then um, of course we got the fountain installed. And then we said, let's go ahead and do a nice low, a low wall around the fountain, which really will help because around the fountain will always be annuals. And so that just makes it a nice defined border between um, the beds and the grass. So got that all installed. Then next we got the shrubs and the perennials planted within two days. Got all yeah. those planted. It was a lot. It was a lot. And then next was the sod. So you got <laughs> to see us install this beautiful fescue sod that is doing quite well. I was looking there at the fountain. It's like, okay, might we be time. We had gone. A little trim. <laughs> yes, that's right. We need to get in here with a, with a mower and probably do a nice little trim on it. 
But, you know, that could not have been like the most perfect, perfect timing. timing on sod. Yes. We we had to hang on through all this drought. We had a little bit of rain prior to. Not it was supposed much. to rain that day. That day was so cloudy. Um, we put out six pallets of sod. Everybody was involved. Mm -hmm. Then thereafter, it rained. Yes, that was our first good I rain mean, in a while. It rained. Yeah. And it's rained since. And the grass, as you can see, I mean, it's green. It's growing. You know, because you have it. I mean, I know when we initially, like the day that you we installed it, you turned on the irrigation. I did. But we haven't run the irrigation in I mean, weeks. I've not run it since. I think I ran the irrigation maybe four times. Right. At the most. At the absolute most. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like people will ask us all the time. It's like when this time of year, um, because we are still doing a lot of planting and because we installed the, the screen that's in the back and somebody was like, why do you never water your plants when you install them <laughs> this time of year? Now, And so I say, well, because our winters are so wet, historically our fall and winters here are extremely wet. So when we planted those North Poles and those Incredibles and those limelights. We had had rain, so the ground was really moist. And then right. it was just a couple of days later, we got the seven inches of rain. Yes. So I, that, that is why I in. love, They're in. I love so, planting in the fall is that you, I don't have to be out here watering all the time. Like I literally can plant them yeah. and walk away. Yeah, we're done. We don't have to be concerned about those until maybe June. Yes, maybe. Maybe. It depends on the heat. So we have to think about yeah. like the heat. And so we, when we're, if we're planting, it's like when the heat hits in late June, July, August into September. And if we're not getting rain, we have to make sure that those plants are getting enough water because that first year they're the most susceptible to dying because their roots are not fully formed yet and really extensive. So that's the beautiful thing about planting in the fall is a lot less work on us. Right, yeah, because I mean, we instantly, like within that same day we were doing something in here planting, we went right across the way and started planting on the creek. Yep. All the shrubs over there. And then um, we had the one where we planted the trees. Yep. You know, so the Proven Winners um, Redbud. Mm -hmm. What's that thing? Midnight, Express. Midnight Express. Midnight Express. I think it was Midnight. I couldn't remember the Express part. Yeah. Yeah. Midnight Express. So. so then what we will do here is we have tulips are throughout right the flower beds. Yeah. So tulips are here. And then are the pansies ready? Pansies are ready. So we will, we did a little bit of a late time game time decision. And so we were growing some pansies that are going to go into these four inner beds that are for annuals. And so we're going to go ahead. I thought I saw some color on them when we were up that, there. Yeah, they're, 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 they're perfect little size. Perfect. So they yeah. can go ahead and go ahead and get in the ground within the next week or two and get them in these four corners of the bed. These will be annuals. And then basically, then we just kind of wait a little bit. We got to get the fountain hooked up. Yeah, that's power just a little bit. There. Power is there, just a little bit of wire. We need an outdoor outlet and waterproof box and that kind of thing. That kind of thing hooked up there, and then yeah. And then so we just sit it's and wait. just sit and wait, and we'll, we're really going to concentrate on even in 2024, just the all those annuals, the Vista Jazzberry, the Saffron Finch, the mixed stuff that you're putting in, all mm -hmm. the annuals and these things. Our little bridge coming across. Uh, and then, then we'll work our way. Yes, out. Out. Yes. So lots of great things coming. So if you're going to come visit Creekside, you, we would love for you to come walk through the garden. We're going to, the projected date, this will really depend on weather because we could get a snowstorm. Who knows? But Saturday, February the 17th. So we are currently closed for the winter. So don't be coming now. I love you, but that gate's going to be closed. So don't come until Saturday, February the 17th. Then we will welcome you with open arms. We have a food truck planned that day. Yes. It's and if you just pay day. attention to the videos and, of course, our website, gardeningwithcreekside.com, that will have all the information. We're going to be adding new elements to the website, so you will have a calendar of events, so you can check things out there. Um, but, yeah, a lot of fun things looking forward to in 2024. We could not have done this yeah. without you. This had your love and support and your encouragement on this entire journey has just been phenomenal and been a good year. we have so appreciated it. It is fun. Yes, we are busy and yes, we are tired, um, but this is a little bit of our downtime. So we're embracing that and trying to just slow down and absorb and think and plan and think of the future and all of the amazing things that lay before us. Yep. So as always, thanks so much for going with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.
Happy New Year. Hey.